Live from Grace P. Johnson Stadium in Pembroke, North Carolina, welcome to the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championships hosted by UNC Pembroke. And a pleasant good evening and thanks for joining us on the Braves Broadcast Network. I'm Cameron Songer here with you all weekend as we bring you all of the track events for the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championships. A quick rundown of tonight's schedule of events. We'll start with the women's 100 meter prelims, then the men's 100 meter. Those will go at 5 and 5.15 respectively. At 5.30 we'll turn to the distance events with women's 1500 meter finals and men's 1500 meter finals. At 6 p.m. We'll, we'll go back to the slightly shorter distances, 400 meters for the women and men. Those are prelims. And then at 6.30 the really long race, the 10k for the women and men and that is the final because Frankly, I wouldn't want to try to run two 10Ks in the span of three days. I'm not sure I want to run uh, one 10K at any point in time, but that's beside the point. It's beside the point, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes, all the track events this weekend, right here on the Braves Broadcast Network, starting here tonight in just a moment with the women's 100-meter dash on Friday. That's tomorrow night. We'll start at 4.30. And then on Saturday, we'll get started right about at noon, just a little bit before a very busy weekend of track and field at UNC Pembroke, the Peach Belt Conference. The five PBC members that compete in track and field, the Augusta Jags, the Clayton State Lakers, the Columbus State Cougars, Montevallo Falcons, and of course the UNCP Braves, plus four associate members of the Peach Belt Conference, the Alabama Huntsville Chargers, the Florida Tech Panthers, the Nova Southeastern Sharks, and the Shorter Hawks. It is just a busy day. There's been a great atmosphere here at the Dick and Lenore Taylor track. As uh, the atmosphere has only improved, the crowd has continued to pick up. And we will start by looking as, as they continue to get ready with the women's 100 meter dash. We can report to you the final results from the men's hammer throw, which took place earlier today. The top three went like this. Phil Maloney, the senior from Florida Tech, took home third with a score of 46.14 meters. Evan Ginn from UNC Pembroke, 49.53 meters. And the Peach Belt Conference champion of the men's hammer throw, the senior from Nova Southeastern with a throw of 52.63 meters, Darren Hendricks, bringing home 10 points to the Nova Southeastern Sharks in the first event to have a completed final here today. Women's 100 meter about to begin. This is heat one of the women's 100 meter dash prelims. So the winners of each of the three heats plus the next best five scores will take will, will advance to Saturday's finals. In lane three, we saw UNCP's Jada Wallace. It looks like the winner of that heat was lane two and out of Nova Southeastern. That looks like Siona Williams who wins heat number one and clinches a spot in Saturday's finals. We'll wait for the official times and the official scoring. Try to get those official times to you and the official results from the first heat as quickly as we can. So there is the winner. I believe that's Siona Williams from Nova Southeastern. She came in with the best qualifying time of 11.85 seconds in the 100 meter dash. Two women's competitors in the Peach Belt Conference had already achieved NCAA Division II provisional marks. That's Siona Williams out of Nova Southeastern and UNCP's Johnny Perez at 11.98. Now in every event, you, you'll hear me use this terminology, there's a an automatic time or mark and a provisional mark. Now automatic time obviously means automatically into the NCAA championships for all of Division II provisional. Obviously you'd like to improve on it, but you have a pretty good chance of making it to the NCAA championships. And uh, in this event, just the two that have already qualified 
for the NCAA championships. And here's Heat 2 about to get underway. Here is Johnny Perez running right in the middle for UNC Pembroke. It looks like she'll take home Heat number 2. Lane 4, the winner there. 11.90, so that improves on her season best mark. A new personal best for Johnny Perez as she wins heat number two in the women's 100-meter dash. So that's a good sign for Braves fans. They will get to see her again on Saturday as she's clinched a berth in Saturday's finals of the women's 100-meter dash. Second place was Johnson from Augusta, Tierra Johnson. Excuse me, Deja Johnson taking second place. And now we're ready for heat number three, which will have Wayne from Columbus State, Long, Smith, and Robinson, all from Shorter. That's Ansley Long, Yamara Robinson, and Alexis Smith. This is a slightly lighter field, not as many competitors in this third and final heat of the women's 100 meter dash. Tatiana Wayne, freshman from Columbus State, also one of the newcomers to watch here in the Peach Belt Conference. Sneaking in one of the last qualifying times, but you never know. You have a good day, the wind blowing the right way. About ready to go with heat number three of the women's 100 meter dash. And off they go. This one much closer. Lane two, taking it home there. Ansley Long with a time of 12.03, clinches the last automatic spot in the Saturday final round. Smith from Shorter also with a time of 12.09. And depending on how that first heat went, that might be good enough to get into the top eight for Saturday. So now on to the men's 100 meter dash. Said this was going to be quick and doesn't get much quicker than the 100 meter dash. AJ Franklin from Nova Southeastern in lane one. Devontae Gibson from Nova Southeastern will be in lane three. From shorter it'll be Steven, or excuse me, Lester Miller. Lester Miller, the top qualifying time, 10.54. He's already clinched a provisional qualifying time. And, uh, well, still a little bit off of that automatic time in NCAA men's Division II track and field. 10.31 is the automatic time for men's Division II. That's, that's really something. You really have to be moving. Lester Miller will be the favorite here in the first heat. So from Columbus State, freshman John Williams coming in with a qualifying time of 10.83. These are the best of the best in the Peach Belt Conference. That extra competition, knowing that these are the best each school has to offer really brings out the best in these competitors. One of the things you'll see is uh, the best qualifying time usually doesn't get an outside lane. In fact, if you're the best qualifier in a heat, you prefer to generally have the innermost lane. That would be four or five. We've seen a couple of the 
top qualifiers come in in lanes two or three. But the, the reason you want to have that inside lane is you don't have to look as far. You're not, you're not relying as much on your peripheral vision to see your other competitors. If you're in the middle, you don't have to look very far to your left or right to figure out where you are and feel other competitors next to you in terms of trying to win that heat. Because there's a, a fair amount of distance. You, know, you, you are focused so hard and moving straight forward. If you're in lane one and someone else is moving really fast in lane eight, you don't necessarily see them until it's too late. Waiting here for the men's 100 meter dash to get started. There'll be three heats of this before we move on to the women's 1500 meter. They will stick to their schedule here and say they'll wait till 5.15 to start the men's 100 meter dash. So we'll step aside briefly and be right back with more coverage of the Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championships Day 1. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championships. We apologize for some of the difficulties we had with uh, our heat sheets with the women's 100-meter dash. We're working to get that fixed for the men, but we can get you the final results from the prelims of the women's 100-meter dash. Heat 1 was won by Siona Williams with a time of 11.8. Fatima Funderburk was in second with a time of 12.18. That also qualifies for the finals. And Acacia Burnett from Alabama Huntsville with a time of 12.35, also reaches Saturday's finals. Heat 2, Johnny Perez from UNCP, 11.9. She's in, as well as Deja Johnson from Augusta. And from Shorter, Camor Anderson gets the third and final qualifying spot from the second heat with a time of 12.34. Heat 3 was won by Ansley Long, the freshman from Shorter, with a time of 12.03. And the second place finisher in Heat 3 also makes it to Saturday's finals. That's Tatiana Wayne, a junior from Shorter, with a time of 12.09. Just about time for the men's 100-meter dash to get started. And again, the top qualifying time for the men's 100 belongs to Shorter's Lester Miller, a time of 10.54. Eric Boat from Nova Southeastern in second, right on his heels with a time of 10.58. Don't expect to see them in the same heat here today in the prelims, but the finals on Saturday, we could see. And again, the finals on Saturday will start at 12.30 p.m. with the women and then the men right behind at 12.35. Men's 100 meters. Miller, Lester Miller from Shorter is in, I believe, lane two in heat number one. He's the favorite to win this event. And they are off. And right away, we can see Miller separating himself from the pack in a 100-meter dash. Lester Miller turns on the afterburners and wins heat number one. 10.60. That's actually not as good as his best time on the season, which was 10.54, but it will be enough to get him in. Gibson from Nova with 10.95 and Clay from Shorter with 10.97 as well as Zimmerman from UNC Pembroke with 11 flat. A couple of very good times in the men's 100-meter dash in the first heat. They have really set the bar pretty high for these remaining two heats. Gibson from Nova Southeastern with that second-place finish. Got to be feeling pretty good. Devontae Gibson. He's just a freshman. Now we get ready with the second heat of the men's 100 meter dash. Quantrell McConico, freshman from Alabama Huntsville, highlights this field. UNCP. <coughs> we represented by Stephen Miller, the freshman. He's in lane two. Lane three, Kuwadashi Nayahuma from Augusta. Keyshawn Tyler from UNC Pembroke is in lane four. Brandon Bula from UNC Pembroke in lane five. Christian Staccato from UNC Pembroke in lane six. Levanta Reddick from Augusta in lane seven. Emil Cicere from Shorter in lane eight. So a lot of Braves in this second heat. They got their last stretches in. This is the second heat of the men's 100 meter dash. And a false start. So we'll have to stop and do it again. They say it was on lane two, which is UNC Pembroke freshman Stephen Miller. Comes in with a solid qualifying time of 10.95. Again, based on that first heat, that's that's gonna be competitive.
because of that false start, he is disqualified. Say one strike and you're out. Jumped the gun there, went a little bit too early. We'll have to watch this second heat from the sidelines. Actually, in lane four, it's not Keyshawn Tyler from UNC Pembroke, but rather Braxton Simmons from UNC Pembroke. Said so this is a very Braves heavy field in heat number two, and that was no lie. Four of the eight competitors in this heat are Braves. This is a close one. Lane three and lane eight, both right there, going down to the wire. And the winner is lane seven. That's Levanta Reddick from Augusta. Emil Cicere from Shorter is also right there, separated by two one-hundredths of a second. And then in lane three, Kudagwashi Nayahuma from Augusta coming in third with a time of 10.83. But 10.76 for Levanta Reddick. That falls short of the provisional mark of 10.61, but it does get him a spot in Saturday's final round. So now we move to the third and final heat of the men's 100 meter dash. They will line up like this in lane one, a senior from Florida Tech, Umut Oztekin. In lane two from UNC Pembroke, sophomore Brett Godwin. Lane three, shorter freshman Barnett Bailey. Lane four is a UNC Pembroke freshman Keyshawn Tyler. Lane five from Florida Tech, freshman Matthew Lanou. Lane six, sophomore from Florida Tech, Nicardo Cameron. Lane seven, sophomore from UNC Pembroke, Michael Powell. And in lane eight, shorter freshman Jozan Carter. Best qualifying time in this group belongs to Umut Oztekin in lane one with a 10.88. Actually, second best behind Barnett Bailey with his, with his 10.68. So a little surprised. That the, the owner of the second best 100 qualifying time, Eric Moat from Nova Southeastern, not competing here in the conference finals in the 100 meter dash. It's got to be a welcome sight for Lester Miller, who won the first heat going away, and will be the odds on favorite to win the finals on Saturday. Lane, or heat three, about to begin. It's a clean start. Pretty even off the jump. The winner looks to be in lane six, Nicardo Cameron, sophomore from Florida Tech. And he clocks in a 10.58, improves his season best by nearly two tenths of a second. Second place is Bailey from Shorter at 10.63, and Powell from UNC Pembroke at 10.76. So Powell breaks under the 11 second mark for the first time this season. Will that be enough for him to get into Saturday's finals? We'll have to see how they tally the results. But first, we'll take a little break. And in about five minutes, we'll come back. It will be the women's 1,500 meter. That's almost a mile. And there will be two heats of that. And we'll make sure that we have IDs on all of those competitors. And we'll tell you more about that when we come back. This is the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championships.
Welcome back to the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championships. And we've got some final results to report for you here, as there were two new conference records set in the women's pole vault. Obviously, just the new high one is the conference record, but the second place finish also had briefly established a conference record. Third place in the women's pole vault from Nova Southeastern, sophomore Christine Sora with a height of 3.05 meters. That's good for 16 points. Marcy Roberts from Alabama Huntsville comes in second. She's a sophomore and marked a, time, or a height of 3.35 meters. And the champion of the 2016 Women's Pole Vault for the Peach Belt Conference from Nova Southeastern freshman Brianna Law. About to begin now the women's 1500 meter. Like they were a little quick to get to the line. Let's try to get you the men's long jump final results as well, as we have final marks in that, and also a new conference record being set there. As we see the women's 1500 meter field beginning to take their three and three quarter laps around the track. The final results from the Men's long jump in third place, Brandon Bulla from UNC Pembroke, a distance of 7.11 meters. Second place, shorter sophomore Jonathan Willman with a distance of 7.17 meters. And Corey Jones from UNC Pembroke, a mark of 7.45 meters. That also sets a new Peach Belt Conference record. Here is the women's 1500 meter and already out in front. It's Vicki Winslow from Alabama Huntsville, followed by Emily Buwalda from Shorter and Maya Coonan from Clayton State. Those are the top three qualifiers in the women's 1500 for this heat, and they are showing why. They are one, two, and three in terms of best qualifying times. The rest of the field, junior from Montevallo, Cheyenne Thompson, senior from Shorter, Leah Sikorsky, sophomore from Montevallo, Hannah Evans, Junior from Montevallo, Natalie Shoemaker. Senior from Columbus State, Caitlin Howard. Freshman from Alabama Huntsville, Matilda Penner. Junior from Montevallo, Anna Leenheiser. Sophomore from Montevallo, Ashley Anderson. Freshman from Alabama Huntsville, Angel Sullivant. And junior from UNC Pembroke, Olivia Lohman. Those are the top 13 in the women's 1500 meter. Then the next 11 will go in the second heat around the track. Looks to be... All daylight for Vicki Winslow as she's leading the pack by a pretty healthy margin. Right behind her, it's pretty much chalk. Emily Buwalda from Shorter and then Maya Kunin from Clayton State. The top three qualifiers are all in the top three. Cheyenne Thompson from Montevallo in fourth. And then the rest of the pack all bunched together. This is the championship of the women's 1500 meter, so there is no prelim and finals. This is it. It will be the same deal for the men's 1500 meter run. They'll run the top 13 qualifiers in the first heat and then the next 14 in the second heat. I've got to say I'm very impressed by Vicki Winslow from Alabama Huntsville. Came in with a qualifying time of 431.78. It's just inside the provisional mark of 434 for NCAA Division II women. The automatic time that she would be aiming at is 423.5, and I can speak from experience. It's difficult when there's not someone running with you to try to figure out where you are on that pace. It's a lot easier to run a PR, run your best possible race, when there's someone neck and neck with you battling. And some motion here among the top four as Cheyenne Thompson from Montevallo has made a move and taken second place. Maya Kunin from Clayton State is in third, and Emily Buwalda from Shorter has dropped back to fourth. Winslow in the front, now more than halfway done the women's 1500 meter run. It's
It's all Vicki Winslow from Alabama Huntsville. She had the best qualifying time by nearly eight whole seconds. Cheyenne Thompson from Montevallo has started to separate herself from the, the next couple. Still not really a threat to Winslow yet as they come down the back stretch in the second to last lap. Now we'll get the push from Buwalda from Shorter. She had dropped way back and now pushes herself all the way back into second place. And that is how they will finish. I, I lost track of the laps there as well. F final time for Winslow, 437.6. Buwalda climbs all the way back into second with 440.87. And Sikorsky from Shorter comes in third at 441. Wrapping up the last couple of racers here in the women's 1500 meter. Battling a strong kick there, there down the home stretch. So that was heat number one of the women's 1500 meter run. And Barring something really remarkable in the second heat, it's safe to say Vicki Winslow will be the conference champion. The senior from Alabama Huntsville will move on to NCAAs with her very strong qualifying time. As we turn our attention now back onto the track in the upper right hand corner, as we get ready to begin the second heat of the women's 1500 meter run. The lineup in order of best to worst qualifying time, Victoria Pecky from Nova Southeastern, the sophomore, with a 5.02 qualifying time. will be followed by Olivia Rodriguez, a junior from Augusta. Third best qualifying time in this second section, sophomore from Alabama Huntsville, Vanessa Cardwell. Then Augusta sophomore, Amber Palermo. Nova Southeastern sophomore Stephanie De La Garda, Florida Tech freshman Charlotte Holly, UNC Pembroke senior Kendall Boykin, Augusta sophomore Taylor Shaw, Columbus State junior Lynette Cepeda, Florida Tech sophomore Astrid Bowden, and Clayton State junior Haley Budd. So quite a few more sophomores and freshmen here in this field in heat number two. I imagine this is a it's a nice accomplishment. Even though this will this will be a slower field than the first heat, having the experience of running at a conference meet, seeing what it really takes, what what it takes to win heat number one in in a conference championship setting, being able to participate in a meet like this, it's great experience for some of these younger runners as they'll continue with their college career. About 200 meters in, Vanessa Cardwell from Alabama Huntsville leads the pack, but it's, again, a lot closer than that first race, that first heat of the women's 1500. You can tell just by looking at the separation in terms of qualifying times between 1st and 13th in heat number one, the difference was nearly a minute and a half, and the difference between 1st and 11th, they're just 11 here in this second heat, it's just 30 seconds. This will be a much more competitive race from top to bottom here. Second heat of the women's 1500 meter. <laughs> Olivia Rodriguez has taken over first place. She's followed by Cardwell from Abba Huntsville and Kendall Boykin from UNC Pembroke. Make a nice charge on her home track. Boykin stands a little bit taller than many of these other competitors. Allows her to use those long strides. Boykin has taken over second place and is closing quickly on Olivia Rodriguez. See if they can start to separate themselves from the rest of the pack. 800 meters to go in the second heat of the women's 1500 meter run. 
Boykin really pushing Rodriguez now. As Cardwell has kind of dropped off the pace, and so is the rest of the pack. This is turning into a two-woman race. 800 meters down now. They cover the first 800 in a time of 240 or so. Victoria Pecky from Nova Southeastern has reclaimed third place. She came in with the top qualifying time of the competitors here in heat number two. And she's still about 10 meters behind Boykin for second place. And holding on strong to the lead is Augusta Jr. Olivia Rodriguez. Let's see if Kendall Boykin tries to make her move now or will wait for that last lap. Appears to be letting Rodriguez hold the lead for now. As they begin the final lap. 1,500 meters. It'll be between those two, barring something catastrophic from both of them. Olivia Rodriguez in the front, Kindle Boykin right on her heels. Rodriguez showing the strong kick. Can she hold off Boykin, who's been behind her all race? It's going to be important to This is it, the last 100 meters of this race, and Boykin would really need to push hard to catch up to Rodriguez. It looks like it's going to be Olivia Rodriguez from Augusta. Holding off. Victoria Pecky in third, Amber Palermo in fourth, and that second little pairing. And look at the nice surge from Stephanie De La Garda. She'll come in fifth with a very strong kick in the final 100 meters. Winning time for Rodriguez, 453.6. So she shaves nine seconds off of her previous personal best this season. I'll tell you what, that is not easy to do at this level of competition. Final couple competitors crossing the finish line. It's Haley Budd from Clayton State. Trots through the finish line. We are done now with the women's 1500 meter run. Conference champion Vicki Winslow from Alabama Huntsville. And the men's 1500 meter run is coming up next. So final official results from the women's 1500 meter run. Vicki Winslow, the senior from Alabama Huntsville, is your conference champion with a time of 437.6. Actually does not improve on her previous personal best. Second place goes to Emily Bowalda from Shorter with a time of 440. And third place, also from Shorter, Leah Sikorsky. 
men's 1500 meter run about to begin, and the top qualifying time belongs to Alfred Chalanga from Shorter, the time of 349.11. He is the odds on favorite to win as he owns a nine and a half second lead in terms of best qualifying time over the next best competitor. The next best qualifying times in order, Matt Ersprung from Alabama Huntsville, and Cale Pirtle, a junior from Clayton State. From Shorter, a sophomore, Albert Chalimo. Junior from Clayton State, Marcus LaFleur. Freshman from Florida Tech, Lucas Hassler. Senior from Columbus State, Cordereal Whitehead. Junior from Nova Southeastern, Benjamin Manuel. Senior from UNC Pembroke, Joel Johnston. Shorter, Junior, Victor Kosgi. Sophomore from Alabama Huntsville, Thomas Grace. Sophomore from Nova Southeastern, Ian McQuaid. And sophomore from Alabama Huntsville, Anthony Wells. First 300 meters down, and looks to be a pretty competitive race here. The gap between Trelonga with the number one best qualifying time and Wells with the number 13 best qualifying time uh, is about 13, or excuse me, 23 seconds. And the leader after one lap is Corderill Whitehead, senior from Columbus State. Admit that is a surprise. See if he can hold on to that lead. This group so tightly matched, we'll start to see a little bit more separation over the course of uh, the last two laps. Whitehead going neck and neck, and that will continue here as he gets passed on the home stretch in lap number two. Halfway through this one, and they are on pace for well, a, a decent time. Obviously, the, the pace will increase. They will run faster in the second couple of laps as opposed to the first. New leaders, UNC Pembroke senior Joel Johnston. Can he hold this lead? Looks like the answer to that is no. As Alfred Chalanga, the favorite, makes the pass, and this could be his time to shine. Chalanga with that top qualifying time of 349. Matt Ersprung from Alabama Huntsville with the next best time at 358 this season. Joel Johnston trying to maintain striking distance behind Alfred Chalanga. One more lap to go. They did, they're at 3.03 right now. This is going to be the fastest lap. Clayton State Junior, Cale Pirtle, making the push. He started to separate himself from the rest of the pack. It's Chalanga followed by Pirtle. Then Chalimo, a couple steps behind. Chalonga, Pirtle, Chalimo. But this is going to come down to two. Alfred Chalonga and Kale Pirtle. Number one versus number three in terms of top qualifying times in the conference. Down the stretch, look at Chalonga go. Pirtle with the long hair flowing in the breeze behind him. Chalonga looks over his shoulder as he comes across the finish line. Kind of slows up there at the end, but it will be Alfred Chalanga winning the 2016 Peach Belt Conference men's 1500 meter with a time of 359.17. Pirtle at 359.6 and Chalimo 401.55. UNCP's Joel Johnson comes in fourth, 402.63. That was a fun race right there. I'm not sure if Chalanga ran out of gas there at the end or if he was trying to show up his opponent. You don't usually see that. Usually not a lot of showmanship out of men's distance runners. And Alfred Chalanga able to add a little bit of flair while also taking home the conference title.
Here is section two of the men's 1500 meter. Clayton State freshman Ryan Polk with the best qualifying time in this group. He just missed the cut in terms of being in section one of two. And it's Polk with a qualifying time of 4.06. And the last person to qualify, Nathan Pollard from UNC Pembroke at 4.14. So this will be a very, very, very close race. 14 competitors, starting with Ryan Polk, freshman from Clayton State. Then Darius Woody, Montevallo Jr. Florida Tech freshman Daniel Pinaranda. Then sophomore from Montevallo, Michael Johnson. Daniel Broadhead, freshman from Augusta. Alex Sanchez, freshman from Clayton State. Boyd Guttery, senior from Augusta. Nicholas Knowles, junior from Florida Tech. Tyler Scheffel, sophomore from Columbus State. Daniel Schultz, senior from Florida Tech. Sophomore from Augusta, Josh Thompson. Kellen Corson, freshman from UNC Pembroke. Freshman from Columbus State, Austin Stewart. And sophomore from UNC Pembroke, Nathan Pollard. Pretty condensed early field. Alex Sanchez from Clayton State. One of the two orange jerseys. Pretty easy to pick out in the field. He's in the middle of the pack. His teammate Ryan Polk is out in front. Tyler Scheffel right there in second. And from Montevallo, Michael Johnson and Darius Woody also right there. A couple purple shirts up in the front of the pack. Some pressure when you have the top qualifying time in a, in a group. Should you be the one who leads right away, or do you wait and try to make your move later, knowing that, at least based on the previous results in earlier meets, you had the best time? Daniel Broadhead, freshman from Augusta, has made the move. He takes the lead. A couple other competitors right behind him, including Daniel Penaranda from Florida Tech. You see, if you're the leader... Sometimes slow down a little bit on the curve, knowing that if someone wants to pass you, they have to run extra distance to go on the outside on the curve. Here's Panoranda looking to make his move. Two laps down, two to go. It's Broadhead, Panoranda, and Polk right there in the front. Looks like Daniel Broadhead starting to open up a little bit of a lead. Michael Johnson trying to close that gap, and Penaranda staying right there with the leaders. Ryan Polk in fourth right now. Broadhead trying to hold on to his lead with Johnson right behind him. Broadhead, Johnson, and Woody, the top three, as they come down the home stretch of the second to last lap. This will be the bell lap. And we'll see these guys really kick it into gear. Johnson really pushing Broadhead now. Johnson trying to make the pass on the turn, and he does. Staying stride for stride. It's now Johnson, Broadhead, and Woody with Ryan Polk behind them. Those are your top four in the second heat. Michael Johnson leading the way now. Two of the top three in this heat are Montevallo Falcons. But what a move it was from Daniel Broadhead. The Augusta freshman sticks with it, breaks away. What a kick. And the Montevallo teammates can only watch from behind. It's freshman Daniel Broadhead winning this race. Time of 4.03.65. That's five seconds off his personal best. 
Corson from UNC Pembroke comes in second at 405.71. Penaranda from Florida Tech at 405.91. Woody from Montevallo, 405.93. So very close all together for most of the pack. As that was the men's 1,500 meter second heat. But again, your champion was back in heat number one. That was Alfred Chalanga, sophomore from Shorter, taking home 10 points for his team in the team standings and the crown as 1,500-meter champion in 2016, the Peach Belt Conference. We'll be right back. Looking at the medal stand for the men's long jump as they award the 
gold medal first place to Corey Jones from UNC Pembroke. Conference record 7.45 meter jump. Second place went to Jonathan Wilman from Shorter. And third pl place, Brandon Bula from UNC Pembroke. That is your medal stand from the men's long jump and a new conference record there. Let's get you set now, the field for the women's 400 meter dash. Now we will do three heats of these and there will also be, this is the prelims, so there will be the finals of this 400 meter dash on Saturday at 12.15 p.m. Now looking at the medal stand for the women's long jump, we already brought you these results, but, or excuse me, the women's pole vault. I already told you about these results, but worth mentioning again just how uh, interesting it was. Two conference records being set as third place went to Christine Sora from Nova Southeastern. Second place, Marcy Roberts from Alabama Huntsville, who set the conference record only to watch it be broken by conference champion from Nova Southeastern, a freshman, Brianna Law. Very impressive pole vault for her. 3.5 meters. And here we are with the field for the women's 400 meter. Heat one of the prelims, and they line up like this. In lane two, Quanisha Allen, senior from Nova Southeastern. In lane three, Ayanna Walker from Shorter. She comes in with the best qualifying time at 53.82. Lane four, senior from Clayton State, Shanice Walker. Lane five, junior from Montevallo, Anna Leenheiser. Lane six, Shayna Cadet, sophomore from Montevallo. Lane seven, freshman from Augusta, Sarah Hossack. And I don't think we have anybody in lane eight. So let's take a look at the current conference leader, Ayanna Walker, senior from Shorter, in lane three, and she is way out in front of the pack. She is very close to the NCAA automatic time. Her best qualifying time is 53.82. The auto time is 53.5, so she needs to cut just three-tenths of a second off of her best time. Looks like she will not really be challenged much here in this first heat. The question is just what will that time be for Ayanna Walker? Putting on a show, no contest here for Ayanna Walker. As she sprints to the finish. Let's see what that time ends up being. 54 even for Ayanna Walker. So just a little bit off of her personal best. She will probably save a little bit in the tank for Saturday's final. Second place to Allen from Nova Southeastern at 58.3. Cadet from Montevallo, 59.3, comes in third. But wow, that was an incredible run by Ayanna Walker. And I think that she's actually capable of running a better time than what she just did. Really, really something. This is heat two now of the women's 400 meter dash. And the lineup for heat number two. In lane three, Angelica McNair, freshman from UNC Pembroke. In lane four, it's Jasmine Crump, sophomore from Shorter. She has the second best qualifying time at 56.11. In lane five, for heat number two, it's Amber Littlejohn, a freshman from Shorter. In lane six, Rachel Dixon, a junior from Columbus State. In lane seven for heat number two, Monica Sapp, a senior from Nova Southeastern. And in lane eight, a freshman from Montevallo, Morgan Daniels. So Shorter comes in with the top two qualifiers in the women's 400 meters. I believe uh, the three of the top four as well. Their women's 4x4 four four team has already hit the NCAA automatic berth. So they are fast and they are deep in this category in the women's 400. In terms of the track events, the women's 4x4 four four for shorter, the shorter Hawks, have the only automatic time in NCAA Division II qualifications that we'll see all weekend. Of course, we might see more auto times hit over the weekend, and a lot of provisional times being met for the first time, and a lot of already existing provisional times being improved upon. Heat number two, 
the lane to watch. The favorite in this one is Jasmine Crump for shorter. She is in lane four. Her qualifying time, second only to her teammate, Ayanna Walker, who we saw run away with heat number one. It looks like shorter has a couple of the top runners in this heat as well. Amber Littlejohn from Shorter is in second place, trailing Jasmine Crump. So it's Shorter and Shorter as the top two spots. With UNC Pembroke's Angelica McNair in third. Looks like heat number two will belong to Jasmine Crump. It's Crump at 56.59. Little John at 57.09 as the top two. Waiting for the next couple of results. It was pretty close there for third and fourth. Daniels for Montevallo at 58.99. Dixon from Columbus at 59.08. McNair at 1 minute .5 and Sapp at 102.79. Tough there for UNCP's Angelica McNair who looked so good coming into the final turn and then really was out kicked in the last 100 meters. So she is most likely done for the weekend. But she's just a freshman so not to despair Braves fans. Still plenty of Angelica McNair in her Braves career. Now heat number three in lane number, see, we'll start with lane number three in heat three. And that's Lauren Davis, junior from Alabama Huntsville. In lane four, it's Crystal Nelson, senior from Clayton State. In lane five, Promise Clark, a freshman from Shorter. In lane six, Heather Hammett, sophomore from Augusta. In lane seven, Lisette Ponce, a sophomore from Alabama Huntsville. And in lane eight, Shannon Roll, a junior from Nova Southeastern. Again, the top qualifier in each heat, plus the next best five times, will reach Saturday's finals in the women's 400 meters. Shannon Roll, the junior from Nova Southeastern, appears to be out in front halfway through the 200 meters. Right behind her, it's Promise Clark out of Shorter. Their qualifying time separated by less than a tenth of a second. Automatic spot in Saturday's finals on the line here. Shannon Roll from Nova Southeastern in lane eight, leading it. Down the stretch, it will be lane eight, Shannon Roll, claiming the victory in this third heat. 56.69 is her time. Clark from Shorter at 57.18, and Hammett from Augusta at 59.2. Rounding out the top three in this third heat of the women's 400-meter dash. So we'll have to wait and see how those times compare to those from the first two. Once we get official times, we will let you know about those as the men's 400-meter dash is on deck. That's coming up in about five minutes. We'll take a little break. You're watching the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championship. Oh, wow, I thought we were going to take a break. It looks like instead they'll let the men go. They had the, the status quo before was stay on, on the schedule, and the men's 400 meters was scheduled to go at 6.15. It's 6.08 right now, <clears throat> so... Apparently, they've decided to break the protocol and just keep going. And I uh, can't say I'm, I'm too upset about that. If, if we finish a couple minutes early, we finish a couple minutes early. It's, uh, I, it's my opinion that's the better protocol to set because tomorrow there's some rain in the forecast. So if there are stoppages in the action because of rain, you'd hate for there to be more stoppages because, oh, well, we're running a little bit ahead of schedule. Let's slow down now. If there's rain in the forecast, get it done. Move through and, and let's go. Anyway, lane assignments for the first heat of the men's 400-meter dash. In lane one will be Shaikim Jackson, a senior from Montevallo. 
Lane two, Christopher Johnson, a senior from Shorter. Lane three, Gregory Roachford, a senior from Shorter. Lane four, sophomore from Shorter, Devontae Fletcher. Lane five, Kelly Thompson, a freshman from Shorter. Lane six will be, let's see, they've changed this up multiple times here on me. Raphael Solis, a junior from Clayton State. Lane 7, Christopher Miles, a sophomore from Columbus State. Oh, we do have somebody in lane 8. And it's Maximilian Schalk, a junior from Alabama Huntsville. So those are the 8 men will be running in heat number 1. Now perhaps they will let them warm up a couple times. We'll just keep it here in case they decide to start early, or if we get word that they are waiting until 6.15, then we'll step aside for a little break. A little bit more on the men's 400 meter. The NCAA automatic time is 46.56, the provisional 47.94. That's, that's a pretty big gap between the two. Gregory Roachford from Shorter has the top qualifying time thus far in the Peach Belt Conference at 47.55 with Quincy Smith from Columbus State right behind him at 47.68. This will be a pretty competitive uh, race, a, a competitive event. There's no there's no one clear favorite here in the men's 400, as, as unlike uh, some other events we've had earlier today and some other events we'll see over the course of the weekend where there's kind of been one or two that are really just far and away, head and shoulders, the favorites, in their respective, I saw, saw it a lot in the distance races, but these these shorter races, these sprints, uh, a lot more open. Not not in distance, obviously, but in the fact that because it's shorter, shorter a distance, not shorter as in the school. Uh, it, you never know. A good day, a, a good jump, and uh, some somebody can have a, a good race and, and and really surprise some people, turn some heads. But Gregory Roachford at least for now, is the favorite in this event. He'll be in lane three when we do get this first heat underway. It's a gorgeous evening in Pembroke, North Carolina. Ideal temperature with a, a light breeze, not too stiff of a wind, but Certainly enough that it will affect you. It's it's right now blowing at the backs of runners coming down the home stretch, so it was aiding the 100. And in, in these longer distances, obviously, it will kind of even itself out because you're running into it on the far stretch and running with the wind on the home stretch. But yeah, 79 degrees, and it's going to stay warm for most of the evening. Won't be going too late into the night here without any kind of weather. This, this will actually be the latest night we have here at Grace P. Johnson Stadium. Tomorrow night should be done by about 6.30, but Saturday, it's, well, it's an all-day affair, but it's all in the afternoon. Thunderstorms in the forecast off and on over the next 24 to 48 hours in the Pembroke area. High of 79 tomorrow, high of 81 on Saturday. Thunderstorm scheduled to kind of be off and on, or at least forecasted to be off and on all day tomorrow. So I'm not sure what that what that means in terms of how they will conduct the track and field championships. If it's if it's just drizzle, it's one thing, and I, I believe that unless the track is underwater, you know, there's standing water on the track, that they would just you know go out there and run. Obviously, thunder and lightning. It becomes a hazard, and the number one concern is not how quickly can we do these events, but the safety of the athletes. So if that's the case, then there'll be some kind of delay. If you're looking for up-to-date, up-to-the-minute live stats for not just the track events, but also the field events, for example, the pole vault, all of the disc and shot, hammer throw, long jump, triple jump, high jump. 
due to the, some of our limitations with staffing and the number of cameras we have. We, we can't bring you all of those events. We're, you know, we're doing our best here, but we can't bring you all those events. The uncpbraves.com website will have a link right on the front to the Peach Belt Conference track and field championship headquarters. And within that, you can find the uh, results for each event. You can also find it straight online at www.tandflive.com slash peachbelt2016. That's T-A-N-D-F-L-I-V-E dot com slash peachbelt2016 for a full list of each event, each result. It's, uh, it, well, it's been a long day out here. A lot of events taking place throughout the morning, including the women's Heptathlon, the men's decathlon, those are all about halfway done. We'll wrap those up tomorrow in the morning. And then Saturday will be all finals. The schedule tomorrow, women's 4x1, men's 4x1, the steeplechase, the 100 hurdles, those are prelims, and the 200 meter prelims. And then Saturday, it's all finals. Looks like we're ready to go now. The first heat of three for the men's 400-meter dash. Again, the runner to watch in this is Gregory Roachford in lane three. He comes in with the best qualifying time at 47.55. Roachford will have to make up the turn as he starts in lane three. This backstretch can be a little misleading, as in the 400, you have to stay in your lane. So it could look like the guys on the outside have an advantage, but then they have to run a longer distance around this second turn. As when you come out of this turn, that's when you get a real sense of who's out in front. And it is Roachford, running tall, running confidently, and it's all shorter. Looks like the top four, all shorter Hawks. Roachford cruising to the finish, moving a little bit in the gas tank. He comes in at 48.2, Fletcher at 48.5, Thompson at 48.7, Salas from Clayton at 49.1. But yeah, the top three all coming from Shorter. And no surprise there as Gregory Roachford wins heat number one, claims an automatic spot in Saturday's finals of the men's 400 meters. On to heat number two of the men's 400-meter dash. And the lineup for heat number two. Quincy Ridley, freshman from UNC Pembroke, in lane two. In lane three, it's Brandon Stern, a sophomore from Florida Tech. In lane four, Jalen Tolbert, a junior from Columbus State. In lane five, from Shorter, it's Cecil Robinson. In lane six... See, it's Ismail Voltaire, a junior from Nova Southeastern. In lane seven, Quincy Smith from Columbus State. And in lane eight, it's Isaiah Lay, a senior from Columbus State. Quincy Smith from Columbus State is the favorite in this heat. He comes in with the second best qualifying time, 47.68. Separated by just a hair from top seed time, Gregory Roachford, who we saw claim the victory in heat number one. Quincy Smith will be in lane seven. Another competitor to watch, Cecil Robinson at 49.81 seed time. He'll be in lane five. Jalen Tolbert from Columbus State, 49.64 seed time. He's in lane four. Some of the top times here of the men who are running the second heat of the 400-meter dash. We'll have one more heat before we turn to the seriously long distance, the 10K.
Again, the top time in each heat guarantees a spot in Saturday's finals. And then the next five best times. Call it wild cards if you want. But that's what gets you in to the one heat championship round on Saturday. Looks like someone might have been close to a false start, so our official not starting the race yet. Now everybody coming set once again. One lap around the track, second heat of the men's 400 meter prelims. How about that? Quincy Smith, who has the best seed time, the only one who's not using blocks to start. He's in lane seven. That's really a display of pure speed then, if you're not coming out of the blocks and still beating people. Smith, not a particularly fast start. It's the runner in lane eight, Isaiah Lay from Columbus State, looking good off the bat. We'll see how well he can handle the particularly long turn. Ismail Voltaire from Nova Southeastern. He's in lane six, looking good, coming out of the turn into the home stretch. It is lane six with Voltaire. Then Cecil Robinson from Shorter in lane five. He fades a little bit down the stretch, and the winner in lane six is Ismail Voltaire, the time of 48.73. Smith from Columbus at 49.3, and Robinson from Shorter at 49.92. Tolbert from Columbus, 50.05. That's the top four times. Lay from Columbus, 50.36. Ridley from UNC Pembroke, 50.63. That was an interesting race there. And something of an upset. As Ismail Voltaire claims an auto berth into Saturday's finals. Now, heat number three of the men's 400 meters. In lane one from UNC Pembroke. It's Brett Godwin, the sophomore from UNCP. In lane two, it's Adrian King, a senior from UNC Pembroke. In lane three, Xavier Fennell, a sophomore from Augusta. In lane four, Terrence Brookins, a junior from Florida Tech. In lane five, Trevian Jenkins, a freshman from Alabama Huntsville. In lane six, Terrell Williams, a freshman from Augusta. In lane seven, Tyler Johnson, a freshman from Nova Southeastern. And in lane eight, that's Dwayne Edwards, Jr. from Nova Southeastern. Edwards with a pretty good qualifying time there in lane eight, 49.71. Tyler Johnson in lane seven, 48.19. And Terrence Brookins in lane four, 48.32. Top qualifying times coming into this one in heat number three. Based on what we've been seeing, heat three, usually you need to be in the top two in this third heat, as the first two heats tend to be the more stacked. You can get into the Saturday finals by being in the top three. And they're off a clean start third and final heat of the men's 400 meter and the last sprint we'll see today. Looking good on the outside. Tyler Johnson from Nova Southeastern, the early leader. About 150 meters to go. In lane four, Terrence Brookins from Florida Tech has taken over the lead. And it'll be close right to the finish. Brookins, though, holds on to win by a very narrow margin. 
48.83 for Brookins. Johnson from Nova Southeastern, 48.94. So 0 0.11 seconds between the top two. 49.9 for Edwards out of Nova Southeastern. And Godwin from UNC Pembroke at 49.93 to round out the top four. Some very good times there in Heat 3 of the men's 4 by or 400 meter dash. We'll let them tabulate the results over the three heats and figure out who the top eight qualifiers are. We'll let you know about that. Take a little break here when we come back. Women's 10,000 meter. That's 25 laps around the track. Get comfortable. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the 2016 Peach Bells Conference Track and Field Championships. It's time now for the women's 10K. This will be 25 laps around the track. And the field for the women's 10K looks like this. Annabelle Knoll from Nova Southeastern, she's a freshman, has the top qualifying time of 38.04. Now, what's interesting about this is there are 13 women running in this race. Uh, four have qualifying times. Everyone else, no official qualifying time. So this is a little bit of a wild card. Not really sure what to expect out of this race. Jordan Humphrey, senior from Augusta. And Imeke Olerich, senior from Nova Southeastern. Amber Braswell, freshman from Columbus State. They have the qualifying times. These other nine are somewhat of wild cards. Amanda Sava, junior from Florida Tech. Katie Nelson, freshman from Montevallo. Catherine Torino, junior from Montevallo. Sierra Millsaps, sophomore from Montevallo. Kirsten Axelson, freshman from Florida Tech. Taylor Gavin, senior from Clayton State. Stacey Solomon, freshman from Alabama Huntsville. Leah Tardinico, junior from UNC Pembroke. And Raina Green, a senior from Columbus State. This will be a long, long race. 25 laps around the track. They come set. And they are off. This is, at this distance, it's, I mean, the, the cliche, it's, it's more mental and physical, but, but, but it's kind of true. And, and you could look at it and say, well, they're not running very fast. The, the idea is not to run fast in the first 10 laps. The idea is to be able to run the last mile or so really fast. Uh, it's how well can you run, I guess, the last 1 or 2K after you've already run 8 or 9K. Uh, that really is what separates a, a, a good 10K runner from a great 10K runner. As they're getting started here, let's get you the final results from the women's 400-meter dash, the top eight in terms of who is qualified for Saturday's final round. No surprise, Ayana Walker from Shorter with the top qualifying time of 54 seconds. Jasmine Crump also from Shorter at 56.59 and the third best qualifying time from Nova Southeastern Shannon Roll. Those were the winners of each of their respective heats. The next five who get in with the next best, next five best times in the women's 400 meters, Promise, or excuse me, Amber Littlejohn from Shorter, Promise Clark from Shorter, Quinesha Allen from Nova Southeastern, Morgan Daniels from Montevallo, and Rachel Dixon from Columbus State, as Heather Hammett from Augusta just misses the cut by 14 one hundredth of a second. Right behind her was Montevallo sophomore Shana Cadet, who was a tenth of a second behind Hammett. One lap down, 24 to go. Meanwhile, on the track for the women's 10K. It's one of the Florida Tech Panthers, who's out in front. It's either Amanda Sava or Kirsten Axelson. Can't tell from up here. She has the early lead on the pack. While they continue, let's look at the men's 400-meter final results from the prelims and tell you who are going to be the eight competing in Saturday's final. On the men's side of the 400-meter dash, Gregory Roachford won heat number one with a time of 48.20. He's in. So is Ismail Voltaire, junior from Nova Southeastern. He won heat number two. The winner of heat number three at, with a time of 48.83 was Terrence Brookins from Florida Tech. He is automatically in. Then the next five, Devontae Fletcher from Shorter, Kelly Thompson from Shorter, Nova Southeastern's Tyler Johnson with the sixth seed, Raphael Salis from Clayton State, the junior with the seventh seed, and just getting in under the wire with a time of 49.30 from Columbus State, Quincy Smith as the first one to miss the cut by three one-hundredths of a second is Christopher Johnson from Shorter. You got a feel for him on that. That's a, that's a tough way to see your season come to an end, and as he's a senior, I'll have to see if he is invited to the NCAA regional or national meet, but to miss the conference championship round by three one-hundredths of a second, Christopher Johnson ran a very good race in a very competitive heat one. 
He had plenty of distance, a half a second between him and the number 10, Maximilian Schalk, in the men's 400-meter field. So it'll be Rochard, Voltaire, Brookins, Fletcher, Thompson, Johnson, Salis, and Quincy Smith representing the top eight in the Peach Belt Conference men's 400-meter dash. That will take place on Saturday at 12.20 p.m. Eastern Time, the championship of that event. As the women's 10K continues on the track. Trying to get an ID on the current leader. That's Kirsten Axelson, a freshman from Florida Tech, who leads the pack. A couple Falcons chasing her from Montevallo. As well as Annabelle Knoll from Nova Southeastern. They represent the front of that first pack. So you've got Kirsten Axelson from Florida Tech in first place, and Amanda Sava, also from Florida Tech, bringing up the rear. Otherwise, it's a very colorful sandwich served on uh, Florida Tech Panther bread. Noel giving good chase behind Axelson. We're beginning to see one uh, top tier really separate itself. Other than that, it's uh, pretty competitive. Looks like seven in that first group, followed by three more. First mile in the books at 6.08. Annabelle Knoll and Kristen Axelson representing the one and two spots. It is tight. There is the move from Annabelle Knoll from Nova Southeastern. She is making the pass to take first place as the top group continues.
About four laps to go now in the women's 10,000 meter run. Catherine Torino from Montevallo in front of the pack right now. Well, say the pack. It, there's been a pack, and then there hasn't been a pack, and then there's been a little bit of a pack as people have gotten lapped and then kind of picked up the pace again. It's a long race is what I'm saying. And uh, really been a terrific job of, of everyone uh, who's battled through this one. Looks like Torino out in front. Junior from Montevallo. We saw Annabelle Knoll from Nova Southeastern hold the lead off and on throughout the race. Also seen a terrific run from Kirsten Axelson from Florida Tech. And she's kind of fallen off the pace. Check that. The leader is not Torino from Montevallo. That's Katie Nelson. Katie Nelson from Montevallo. So, there are, uh, there are three Montevallo Falcons in this race, and they've, uh, they've all been up near the front at different times. Katie Nelson. It's the one wearing uh, slightly light blue s uh, shoes, running shoes. in the top left part of your screen. The thing with a, a 10K is the definition of endurance, and over the course of 25 laps, pe people are going to be lapped. It's going to be difficult at times to, to see who is uh, actually out in front, because once you settle into a pace, Nelson from Montevallo <coughs> is the leader as every time she crosses the finish line they remove one more lap off the number of laps to go. Of course that isn't necessarily the number of laps for everyone else as they cross the line. So the scorer and timekeeper will tell them each runner how many more laps she has to go. Current time right now 35 minutes and 58 seconds. Getting closer and closer to finishing this race. Katie Nelson, just a freshman from Montevallo. You can see she's just passed a, a group of runners. She gets ready to complete another lap. Reminder that the men's 10K coming up after the conclusion of this race. That's also one heat for the championship. And here comes the bell lap. Ring the bell, finally. 24 laps down, one to go for Katie Nelson. Annabelle Knoll from Nova Southeastern. I don't believe she's been lapped yet. Automatic qualifying for the women's 10K, 34-33-9-7. So they're already three minutes past that in the provisional time of 36-56.2. So this race has not been uh, up to some of the top races at the D2 level at, at this distance. But again, coming into this race, just four 
women in the Peach Belt Conference had even posted a seed time in, in this race. They really kind of expanded this a little bit more to say uh, even if you hadn't run a 10K at, uh, at any point yet this season, if the uh, coach selected you and uh, assuming that you were a, a distance runner and willing and able to compete in this race, then uh, it was it was a little bit more flexible here in the in the 10,000 meter run for women's peach belt championships than we've seen in in other events where by necessity you're limiting the number of heats or the number of racers on the track. Kind of saw it with the with the 1500. There she is crossing the finish line in first place. Katie Nelson wins the women's 10k. Just three seconds off the conference record in that event. And in second place, Annabelle Knoll from Nova Southeastern. As those two head off the track, they'd had a very, very good run. Third place will go to Kirsten Axelson from Florida Tech. Winning time, 38.15.99. Noel from Nova Southeastern at 38.26.5. Excuse me, that's Sava from Florida Tech who comes in third. 38.4, 38.43.4. Those are your top three. Humphrey from Augusta, 38.51.83. Galvin from Clayton State crosses the line, 38.53.17. So Nelson, Noel, and Sava, the top three in the women's 10,000-meter run. We'll step aside now as the last couple racers finish up their 10,000-meter run, and when we come back, we'll introduce you to the field of the men's 10,000.
So that was the women's 10,000 meter run. Now on to the men's 10,000 meter run. And there will be 22 competitors in this race. 11 of them have seed times, 11 do not. And the top 11, Bryden Groves Scott, a freshman from Alabama Huntsville, with the best qualifying time, 32.09.73. A couple guys at 32.27, both from Nova Southeastern, Christian Appel, who's a senior, and Maximilian Spurl, who is a freshman. Two more Nova Southeastern Sharks, junior Thomas Ingalls and senior Long Tran. Then Dylan Forrester, sophomore from Augusta. Alabama Huntsville's junior Daniel Rush from Augusta. Sophomore Justin Braswell comes in with a qualifying time at 35 minutes and one second. At 35 minutes and 18 seconds, soft, uh, sophomore from Columbus State, Hussein Sadiq. Anthony Parmaswaran, a sophomore from Alabama Huntsville, 36 minutes, one second. And then our last person with a qualifying time is Timothy Thompson, a junior from Columbus State. Now the wild cards in this race. Tucker Mells, a freshman from Florida Tech. Alfred Chalonga, a sophomore from Short. Remember, he's the one who won the, fi uh, the 1500. And he is back trying to double up with a 10,000 meter victory. It'd be very interested to see how much he has left in the tank because he certainly is fast. Remember, we saw him kind of slow down at the end of the 1500. Maybe he was trying to save a little bit of energy on the last, I don't know, 50 meters of a 1500, knowing that he still had 10,000 more meters to go today. Anu, or excuse me, Neb Anu, a senior from UNC Pembroke. Brian Lancaster, sophomore from Shorter. Logan Ward, a freshman from UNC Pembroke. Jordan Poach, a senior from Montevallo. Ryan McFall, a senior from Columbus State. Troy Hickam, junior from Clayton State. Shorter's sophomore, Oswaldo Franco. Josh Evans from Montevallo. And finally, UNC Pembroke junior, Tim Sigman. That is your 22-person field of the men's 10,000-meter run. 25 laps around the track to determine the Peach Belt Conference champion of the men's 10,000 meters. This is our final event of the evening. We'll be back with a broadcast tomorrow evening, 4.30 p.m. with the 4x100 meter relays. We'll also see steeplechases, some hurdles, and the 200 meter dash prelims of the hurdles and the 200 everything else finals. One man starting to break away in the very early part of the first lap. That's Long Tran from Nova Southeastern. The man who leads the pack in lap number one. One lap down, 24 laps to go. And the men's 10,000 meter, part of the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Championships at UNC Pembroke. correction from what I said earlier, the leader right now of the men's 10,000 meter, now two laps in the books. This is Dylan Forrester, a sophomore from Augusta. And behind him, it's Bryden Grove Scott from Alabama Huntsville. Those are the two that have separated themselves from the pack in terms of the front, but then a huge mass there in the middle part of this group. That's where, honestly, if I had to guess, that's where the winner's going to come from. Because when you're out in front that fast, as Dylan Forrester jumped out to. 
he kind of looked at his watch a little bit and has since kind of slowed the pace. It'll be very interesting to see if he can maintain such a pace because he was way out in front very early in this race. Bryden Grove Scott has begun to try to close some of that distance. You can see this is going to be a very fun and competitive race, also a long one and, and really more of an endurance race than a speed race at, at 10,000 meters. Great test of stamina and a lot of mind games as well. How well can you run with a pack and uh, overcome that temptation to try to pass people in the early going? It's a lot easier to run when you're surrounded by a bunch of people. It sort of makes those laps sort of fall away. We're just two laps down. Excuse me, three laps down. Already a move being made by Bryden Grove Scott, closing that gap on Dylan Forrester. Let's see if he passes him or they will just stay neck and neck. But as Grove Scott has pulled closer to even, we've also seen the rest of the pack pull itself closer to the leaders as well. I'm not sure if that's because the leaders have slowed down or everyone else sped up. And now that big clump that we had seen in the middle sort of separates into two as well. And Forrester doing a nice job of keeping his pace. He is not ahead by, um, you know, 30 yards like he was at the beginning. But has also held off a, a nice challenge from Bryden Grove Scott. As we wrap up the first mile of this men's 10K. Get ready to cross the finish line for the end of lap number four. 1,600 meters down in the men's 10,000 meter race, the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Championships. Dylan Forrester in first for now, followed by Bryden Grove Scott, and then a host of other contenders for the crown as we wrap up day one of the Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Outdoor Championships.
new leader in the men's 10,000 meter run. It's Ryan McFall, a senior from Columbus State, who has taken the lead from Dylan Forrester from Augusta. But Forrester is hanging tough. Also, Bryden Grove Scott, the top qualifier in the blue jersey from Alabama Huntsville, is also right there in the middle of the pack. Sun ducking behind some clouds. The temperature dropping a little bit from where it was earlier. It's no longer hovering around 80 degrees as it was for most of the afternoon here in Pembroke, North Carolina. Right now, 75, partly cloudy. The firm breeze. Another person to keep our eye on, even though he doesn't have a qualifying time, he hasn't competed in the 10K yet this year, is Alfred Chalonga. He's from Shorter. He's going to be wearing a white top and has number 13 on his jersey. He won the 1500 earlier today. That's roughly one mile. A mile is about 1600 meters. So he already has one difficult event under his belt today. So right now it looks like in the middle of the pack, perhaps just waiting to make his move. Also right up in the very front is Tucker Mells, a freshman from Florida Tech. He's been in fourth for the last two laps now. now the leader is still Ryan McFall. 16 laps to go in this 25-lap race to determine the men's 2016 10K champion. Another change at the front of the 10,000 meter run. Dylan Forrester, who came out so fast at the start of this race, had opened up a lead of more than 20 meters. Had that lead get closed, got past, battled his way back. He's in front for the time being, despite a serious challenge from Tucker Mells from Florida Tech. He's also running right with him. Approaching the halfway point of the men's 10K. 14 laps to go in a 25 lap race. As the wind has really picked up here across Dick and Lenore Taylor track. 
at Grace P. Johnson Stadium. Wonderful site for the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championships. UNCP, the only school in the Peach Belt Conference that plays football, so it's a big enough facility. Obviously, been some big crowds off and on throughout the day. As we will now uh, step aside briefly from the men's 10K race. While this is going on, we will also do a podium ceremony for the top three finishers in the women's hammer throw. And in third place, with a distance of 42.3 meters from Nova Southeastern, sophomore Sydney Molina. In second place in the women's hammer throw, senior from UNC Pembroke with a distance of 48.11 meters, Anya Day. And the champion of the women's hammer throw for the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championships from Shorter, a junior, with a distance of 48.8 meters, Madison Sears. Here is the podium for the women's hammer throw, which took place earlier this afternoon. Now back to the men's 10K. It is still Dylan Forrester from Augusta. Came in with the sixth best qualifying time. He has held the lead for most of this race. Forrester being chased by Tucker Mells from Florida Tech, and now a challenge coming from another competitor. I can't quite see the number on his jersey. But a nice surge there from the middle of that second pack to rejoin the top two. We're not seeing the same level of real division in this race as we saw from the women's race where once you got about halfway through the race with about the last 10 laps to go you just had you just had people scattered all over the track the top few here have really worked together it's sort of a, a strange concept to people who aren't familiar with distance running that in these really long races you see it in cross country as well if the the, the couple fastest runners kind of identify each other and the, the, there's sort of an unspoken agreement. We're going to work together to get to the last, whatever, 200, 300, 1,000 meters, and then I'm going to try to beat you. Uh, be because it's such a long race, it's such a long uh, event, that if you don't have that kind of approach, uh, you're kind of off running on your own. Leading pack about to lap one of the runners in the back from Shorter. Pass him on the outside. As they keep going, 11 laps to go. So they're more than halfway home. It's still Dylan Forrester in the lead. Not a lot of margin for error, though. Up joining that pack as well, Alfred Chalanga. Knew we'd be calling his name sooner or later champion in the men's 1500 meter trying to double dip and take home another big victory for shorter he's up there in fourth place right now excuse me that's neb anu from unc pembroke who's in fourth place The UNCP distance runners wearing white tops with dark bottoms, whereas some of the sprinters for UNCP have been wearing the all black. So it's a little tough to tell, especially on the back straightaway. I believe that's Long Tran with bib number five, who is in third place. He's been in third place for a while now and looking to try to push his way forward. We'll see if that top four starts to separate themselves. You've got Forrester from Augusta. Mills from Florida Tech, Tran from Nova Southeastern, and Anu from UNC Pembroke. A couple more guys from Nova Southeastern right on their tails.
New leader in the men's 10,000 meter run is just taking the lead. UNC Pembroke's own Neb Anu has finally made the move, worked his way all the way in front. Dylan Forrester surrenders the lead again. Now, he briefly hadn't led earlier, but for the most part, he has led this race most of the way. There's still seven laps to go. Let's see if Neb Anu can hold on to that lead or if someone else can chase him down. Long Tran, the senior from Nova Southeastern, trying to make his move now. He also has teammate Christian Oppel not far behind, and also in that front pack who's been there most of the time, Tucker Mells from Florida Tech. I'm looking to hold a lead for this entire lap. It takes a lot of energy to work your way out of the middle of the pack and go all the way to first. Does Anu have enough left to hold on to that lead, or is he going to try to work from behind again? And what a kick this is now from Long Tran as he jumps out into the lead with some nice long strides. And Tran has turned it on. And he's beginning to create some distance. Six laps remaining now as we... We'll have a. We'll now do a podium ceremony for the men's pole vault. In third place from Columbus State, a freshman with a height of 3.86 meters, Peter Bennett. In second place, freshman from Alabama Huntsville with a height of 4.01 meters, A.J. Harmon. And in first place, freshman from Alabama Huntsville with a height of 4.01 meters, Rob Russell. So Rob Russell, your 2016 Peach Belt Conference champion in the men's pole vault. As we turn our attention back to the men's 10,000 meter run, that is Long Tran from Nova Southeastern, who leads the pack. Look at that, Dylan Forrester, who had been the leader for most of the first 18 or so laps, has fallen into fourth place. Trying to chase down Tran is the guy in second place, Neb Anu from UNC Pembroke. Five laps to go in the 25-lap race. At this point, it's uh, it's a lot about what 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 do you have left in the tank and and how do you ration that so that there's still enough for a a kick in the last 200 300 meters or so. comes a move that looks like Alfred Chalonga now, who's trying to make a move and chase down Long Tran. In the top right corner of your screen, there are the top two in our race right now. As they come down the back straight away, they have really separated themselves from the rest. That's Maximilian Spurl, who's the leader of the race. I've been misidentifying him this whole time. I apologize. They're, they wear such tiny numbers on their jerseys. That is, however, Alfred Chalanga, who's making the challenge. So it's Spurl and Chalanga, the two who will go neck and neck through the final three laps. And 
at some point here in the next minute or so, we will also have a podium ceremony for the top three in the women's 10,000 meter that took place just before this race. Maximilian Spurl, freshman from Nova Southeastern. First time we've seen him compete today. He'll be trying to hold off Alfred Chalonga from Shorter, the sophomore who won the 1,500-meter men's race. And emerged from the middle of the pack. He really bided his time, really waited to make a move. He came in without a qualifying time, without a seed time. But because of the similar situation that we had in the men in the women's race where otherwise there would have only been a couple competitors coaches allowed to nominate a couple more competitors so with two laps to go in the men's 10,000 we'll quickly turn our attention to the podium one more time here tonight for the women's 10,000 meter top three in third from Florida Tech with a time of 38.43. From Florida Tech, Kirsten Axelson. Second place, Nova Southeastern's Annabelle Knoll, a freshman with a time of 38.26. And the Peach Belt Conference champion, another freshman. So the whole podium in the women's 10K, all three freshmen. 38 minutes, 15.99 seconds for Katie Nelson from Montevallo, who is your 2016 women's 10,000 meter champion in the Peach Belt Conference. Back to the men's 10K. And there is Chalanga finally making the pass on Spurl. Can he hold the lead for the last two laps will be the question to watch. As the two have to battle their way around the other competitors on the track and lap them at various points. This will be a fun excuse me, last lap. There's the bell lap, and here we go. These last two competitors, or these first two competitors, in the last lap around the track. And look at Chalanga. Really turn those legs over, generate a long stride. He's opened up a lead of about seven or eight meters now, and looking to build on it some more. He's already won the 1,500 earlier today. Looking to claim two distance crowns in one day. In the top left corner of your screen, Alfred Chalanga <coughs> passing the pole vault pits now. And he has opened up a nice lead. Maximilian Spurl will have his work cut out for him down the home stretch. But here comes Chalanga trying to close out the 10,000. A furious kick from Spurl. Does Chalanga have enough in the tank? And the answer is yes. The 10,000 meter champion, Alfred Chalanga from Shorter. Let's see if we can get a final time on that for him. It was a great run from Spurl as well. Crossing the finish line in third will be Dylan Forrester. And fourth, I believe that's Long Tran from Nova Southeastern, but I'm not 100% sure. Waiting for final times to pop up on the scoreboard. You have, this is a tough situation now because you have guys finishing the race while the rest of the field still has one or two laps to go. So they want to celebrate, they want to get some water, they want to get some attention from their coach and their trainer but they also need to get out of the way. Still waiting for a final time there. But no doubt about it, Alfred Chalanga. Double dips in terms of championships today. He'll take home a crown in both the 1,500 and the 10,000. Another good finish as well for UNCP's Neb Anu. Be the first brave to cross the finish line in the 10,000 meter run. I believe a top five finish for him in this event. Certainly a nice way to go out as the senior wraps up his career on Dick and Lenore Taylor track. 
and to host the Peach Belt Conference Championships and run a pretty good time in a grueling 10K event. Competitors continue to finish up their last laps. We'll wait for final times, official results from the 10,000 meter run. The winner of the men's 10,000 meter run is Alfred Chalonga with a time of 32.08. And a very close second place finish for Maximilian Spurl comes in at 32.10. Those two really duked it out. And in third place was Forrester, 32.27. Oppel from Nova Southeastern comes in fourth. Fifth place goes to Neb Anu. As the last couple racers finish up the men's 10,000 meter run. And uh, this will wrap up our first day of coverage. A reminder that we'll be back at it here tomorrow at Grace P. Johnson Stadium. Dick and Lenore Taylor track and the surrounding field events. We'll only be showing you the track events, of course, but that means we'll be on the air at 4.30 p.m. with the women's 4x100 meter final. That's a relay. That will be very exciting. That'll be followed by the men's 4x1. Then the women's and men's steeplechase races. And those will be all finals. At 545, the women's 100-meter hurdles. Those are prelims. And then at 6 p.m., the men's 110 high hurdles. Those are also prelims. Wrapping up tomorrow's action will be the 200-meter races for the women and men, 615 and 625 p.m., respectively. That all starts at 430 p.m. tomorrow here at the 2016 Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championships. On Saturday, we will be here all afternoon as track events begin at 11.50 a.m. with the women's 100-meter hurdles and go through to about 3.30 with the final award ceremony where they will crown a team champion on both the women's and men's side in the Peach Belt Conference 2016 Track and Field Championships. This is just day one, and we're so glad you joined us, and we're here to witness all of the excitement, a couple of conference records being set, and some very exciting races as well as the last competitor in the men's 10,000-meter race crosses the line in just a moment. Just a, a little anticlimactic, I'll admit, and... and you know, you get used to watching some sprints and uh, some relays. And then here at the end today, you, you close out with the 10,000-meter race, which is by far the longest. Uh, we won't see another serious distance race again until Saturday with the 5,000-meter. Looks like he still has one more lap to go. Some very good results early on today. Let's get you the results from the women's long jump. Ansley Long from Shorter took home first place, followed by Shakira Bartley from Nova Southeastern. Christina Aldana from Shorter taking third in the women's long jump. Let's see, what other events have we not looked at the final results? In the men's 1500, Alfred Chalonga in first from Shorter, Kale Pirtle from Clayton State in second, and Albert Chalimo from Shorter in third, with UNC Pembroke's Joel Johnson Johnston in fourth, and Victor Kosgi in fifth. 
we set the prelims in the men's and women's 100 meter and 400 meter dashes today. We went from a field of three heats of eight down to one final championship eight person field. Some very exciting close races. We'll see more action like that tomorrow in the 100 and 110 meter hurdles for the women and men respectively and also in the 200 meter setting up a very busy final day for the Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championships on Saturday. And also on this weekend for the Braves Broadcast Network will be out on Sunday at UNCPU Baseball when they host Senior Day against Augusta. So a very busy weekend on the Braves Broadcast Network. This is just the start, and what a great way to start off a very busy weekend with some outstanding track and field action. It's been a pleasure bringing it to you, and Look forward to seeing you right back here tomorrow. For my entire crew, this is Cameron Songer saying thanks for watching. And remember to tune in again for more 2016 Peach Belt Conference Track and Field Championship action. 4.30 p.m. Eastern Times when we'll be back on the air for more action. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your night.